and welcome to South by Southwest 2008. I'm fortunate to be here today with Nathan Shedrock, and it's a pleasure to see you again. Great to see you, We've Charles. Had a few great evenings out and oh, yeah? spent a lot of time together, so I'm really proud to have this occasion to catch up with you here a little more formally on this um, on this podcast. Great. Talk to you about your work um, and particularly your book, um, Making Meaning, and um, some of the educational work that you're doing right now, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that a little later. Let's let's start right here at South by Southwest. What 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 are you finding here that's exciting and interesting? What do you think people are getting out of the show this year? Well, the the, the great thing about South by Southwest is is really the people that it gathers. So, you know, the sessions are really interesting, and there's tons of them. But I really enjoy best meeting people, seeing old friends, meeting new people in the industry, and talking about really high level ideas that you don't you don't get a chance to talk about at most other conferences. That's right, there's a kind of, um, the people who come here, each, everybody, I, I've never had standing in line be such an enjoyable experience yeah, because true. you always start talking to someone, everybody has a fascinating story to tell, exactly. something interesting they're working and on. And people are interested in engaging on a, a slightly more, sometimes philosophical or intellectual or pragmatic level. It's not just about the work that they're doing or their tools or the latest, greatest technology. It's about what it all has to relate to the world or what meaning it has. And that's a great segue into your book, yeah. Making Meaning. And I found that book you know, very intriguing because I think it did exactly that. And it lifts you up out of the out of the grass and gets your head head seeing things in a in a broader way. And um, but what 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 is the importance of making also, meaning to web developers and people who are helping companies communicate better? Well, meaning is the deepest connection that we can make through our products and services, through our events and experiences uh, with our customers or our users. And so, understanding the framework of what it means to, what meaning is and how it's constructed gives us the opportunity to create more meaningful products and services and experiences and events for the people we're serving. So we're going beyond the kind of utility of the product or the website Absolutely. or whatever, and we're saying people here have some kind of connection that what they're doing has to mean something to them. Well, the more meaningful uh, solution is, often the more successful it is in the marketplace. And meaning is the deepest level at which customers or users engage with something. And so it's the deepest of five levels. The first level is uh, around function and performance. So does this do what I need it to do? Does it have the features that I need? It's a fairly utilitarian judgment. Um, it's, it's the most shallow judgment we, need, we make. The next thing we look at uh, is price. So of the things that do what they need, what I need done. Is there value? Well, it doesn't do it for a price I'm willing to pay, right? Yes. I could buy a Ferrari and I could buy a Hyundai and I could buy a bicycle and they all get me from point A to point B, but not everyone is willing to pay the same price for that kind of value. Right. The third level in is all about emotions and, and that keys into lifestyle. So we tend to, and in fact, it's very powerful when products and services uh, elicit emotions from us because it becomes a much more deeper ex experience for us and a much more enjoyable or scary or whatever it is we're looking for. And that's a really powerful moment and the advertising industry knows this and a lot of sharp companies understand this. And that's only halfway between you know, the most shallow and most deep levels. So the fourth level is all about values and if you can connect with someone's values, you, you touch them and engage with them at a deeper level. And then the last level after that is all around meaning, which is um, how your solution, how your offering fits into someone's sense of reality. And that's really what the book is about, designing for that deepest connection. Okay, let's take a couple of examples here. Okay. Accomplishment, community, beauty, duty, enlightenment. Right. So pick a few random well, examples of meaning. So and how, how, do the, how do I apply those kind of concepts to right. designing a website or a product experience? So one of the things we found in our research is that, that we identified 15 core meanings, uh, w many of which you just named. Um, and these are overriding principles that define people's reality. And the interesting thing of, that we found about them is as you move through the spectrum from shallow to deep, it gets increasingly difficult to serve people because the, the 
product groups get increasingly smaller and smaller, the market segments get smaller, until they get so personal that you almost have to build custom solutions for each person. When you get to the deepest level, meaning however, things flip around and we found that these 15 core meanings are ubiquitous around the world. Every culture has an understanding of these meaning systems. So what we describe in the book is a process of if you start with the core meanings and you probably can only ever target three or four at, at a maximum, if you start there and design from them, you can hit all the other levels in a much more direct, quick and, um, you know, less expensive fashion. So if you're looking to have a product that crosses international or cultural boundaries, this is the kind of place to start to yeah. think about these things. And, and even the companies with the, the most money in the world, like Microsoft, um, can't afford now to localize from the feature level in and try to get to the, the deepest levels of meaning. The only way that they can afford to do it is to start at the deep end and then work out. And you still need to localize. The interesting thing about the 15 core meanings is that even though you're, they're ubiquitous, every culture and every person expresses these differently and they may prioritize them differently. So you still need to identify what you're shooting for and then understand how your customers uh, react and instantiate them and what triggers that for them. But it's still easier to start from that level and move out than it is to try to work there from a product spec sheet. So we can't just treat the world as one no, single unit not here. not yet. But Hopefully what, never. Maybe what we can do is start, start to simplify what right. we do based on these things. Is there some... Or, or I, would, I would prefer to use the word clarify, right. So when you can clearly trigger meaning and values and make connections for, for customers or users or whoever, um, you're able to deliver value much more directly and much more... Uh, Quickly. So if I were offering, say, uh, a healthcare site, I might say, well, this is all about duty, looking after my family, exactly it's right. all about security, these kind of things, and then just build that product out from those kind of right. concepts. You may find that a certain user group or market segment or cultural segment uh, prioritizes duty, but community and accomplishment over another market segment that might prioritize beauty, creation, and community, right? So once you've identified that, the next step is to say, okay, now how do they express this? How is community expressed? Is it lots of bright, shiny people and, and photos of them? Is it uh, personal interactions? How does duty get expressed and how does accomplishment get expressed? But if you start with those core ideas, you've built the roadmap of where you need to go, and then in some ways all your design decisions start to make themselves because as long as they key back to what your focus is, you're on the right track. They're like a stake in the distance that you can march exactly towards right. kind of thing. And, as, as and long put as all you, your ideas up against. Right, and then as long as you pick the right stake in the distance, and you realize it may be different for a different set of audience members, and don't try to replicate it where it's not appropriate, yeah, you're on the right, you have a roadmap and a compass to take you directly to that deepest connection.